Hi and hello everyone, I am Dharmeshwara and today in this video, I am going to talk about Chem Informatics. I hope that all of you will enjoy this video and this video will be really informative to those who are watching. At the end of the video, I hope all those who watch this video will really understand what Chem Informatics really is. Explaining about Chem Informatics, I have divided this video into three parts, where part 1 is Introduction to Chem Informatics, part 2 is Bridging Chem Informatics and Computer Science, and part 3 is Activity Mining and Prediction. Part 1 Introduction to Chem Informatics So, what is Chem Informatics? According to National Center of Biotechnology Information, Chem Informatics is a relatively new field of information technology that focuses on the collection, storage, analysis, and manipulation of chemical data. The chemical data of interest typically includes information on small molecule formulas, structures, properties, spectra, and activity, either in biological or industrial. Chem informatics originally emerged as a vehicle to help the drug discovery and development process. However, chem informatics now plays an increasingly important role in many areas of biology, chemistry, and biochemistry. So how did chem informatics started? At the beginning, many foundational algorithms of chem informatics have been described since 1950s. But open source software implementing the algorithms became accessible only since the mid 1990s, which is around 40 years later. But in 2004, a large public small molecule structure repository was made freely available by the National Library of Medicine. Part 2 Bridging Chem Informatics and Computer Science. So what is the relationship between computer science and chem informatics? How did computer science contribute in chem informatics? Okay, as we all know that bioinformatics talks about the sequence, chem informatics deals with the chemical structures. As we all know that chem informatics are used in mostly in drug discovery, risk can be minimized during drug discovery by using chem informatics, which minimizes the chances of small molecule failing due to poor physical chemical or biological properties during research and development as a drug candidate. In cases where these properties are poor, a chem informatics approach can suggest replacement of certain functional groups to maintain the potency but improve the solubility and bioavailability. By this, we can decrease the, the try and error method which can cost more on the drug discovery. As we all know that there are many molecules that exist in this world, all the molecules can be represented by a 2D or a 3D structure. Although the 2D or 3D structure gives different informations, but both the 2D and 3D structure are valid and accurate. So they are too much of data. How can computer science help us to store all this data? What are the challenges faced during the integration of this data? We all know that there are many databases available in the online. Two of those are ChemBLDB and PubChem which are freely available and contains many of data points, possibly millions for ChemBLDB and 10 of millions for PubChem. And different databases uses different algorithm, which makes it hard to normalize and standardize. From this, integration of data across chemical databases is a challenge due to sheer data volume and to the difficulties in normalization of chemical and bioactivity data. Due to this, we cannot convert data from one database to another database because they use the different algorithms, so it's hard to normalize. Next, molecular graphs must be captured in a machine-readable fashion. The input we put should be read readable by the machine so that the outcome we can get is a good 3D or 2D structure which we want so that we can share the data and other scientists can receive the data for their future research. Next. It is also necessary that life scientists be able to search chemical data such as multi-label graphs where graph labels can change from database to database, which means when you change from one database to another database, the label stays and you get the exact data of the 2D or 3D structure of the molecule. Figure 1 shows that there are different ways or many ways 
to represent structure of a molecule. For example, on the top left, it's a 2D structure where it's not fully labeled and on the top right, it's fully labeled and is the 2D structure. On the bottom left, it's a 3D conformation and on the bottom right, it's a surface representation. So there are four ways to represent a molecule. Each of those gives a different information, but all four are accurate and valid. There are many databases that exist online and different databases use different algorithms. So it has been hard to normalize all of them. And there are too many molecular structures which made scientists too difficult to search for a specific molecule structure. So how did this problem solve? This was solved by a canonicalized algorithm and identifier, creating an identifier. So the first was it started by Morgan, where he described the first such unique representation algorithm or canonicalization algorithm, allowing chemists to generate unique string representation of chemical graph and compare structures through string comparisons. Next, the simplified molecular input line entry system, or also known as SMILES, format defined by Weininger in 1988. Since the original canonicalization algorithm was proprietary, multiple implementation of the format have been available each employing a different canonicalization algorithm, usually based on the Morgan algorithm. As more and more data has been available online, the use of unique structure-based identifiers become a pressing need, resulting in development of the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry's International Chemical Identifier, which also known as INCHI, a non-proprietary structured textual identifier for chemical entities. With this INCHI code, it has been easy for all the scientists to search for a specific molecule structure where each of the molecule structures or molecule has their own in chi code. In figure 2, we can see that there is a molecule and that molecule is lipoic acid. And we can see that there are many codes. So as I explained earlier, there are two types of codes which made scientists to easily identify a molecule or a molecular structure. So on the left side, we can see a code that bottom left, that is the SMILES code as described earlier. And on the right side, those are the INCHI keys and INCHI code. By this, it has been easy for everyone to access the website and databases and easily obtain the information or data they want for research purpose or educational purpose. Part three, activity mining and prediction. So what can we expect from chem informatics? Why chem informatics is important? And how chem informatics can contribute to science? The answer is prediction decreases errors. The goal of any modeling approach is capturing and characterizing correlation between structural features and observed biological activity. We can design the drug in a lab, which may cost more and might prone to failure. Rather than doing that, we can just do that in a computer which gives us the structural features and observe biological activities. Through this, we can predict what the drug can do and what are the weakness of the weaknesses of the drug. Through that, we can improvise the drug. The first step in predicting biological activities is to generate molecule descriptors or features that are num numerical representation of structural features. For example, label graph and the associated characterization are easily accessible to computer scientists. here we are everyone finally the conclusion we can observe that chem informatics is a very useful field of science and highly contributes to science chem informatics is also very helpful in designing and discovering drugs to avoid the try and error method which might be very costly chem informatics also made scientists easy to search for molecules their structures and detailed information about the molecules in plenty of databases therefore people should focus more and depth study in chem informatics must be done, which will definitely lead to many scientific discoveries in future. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and find it informative. I would also like to take this as an opportunity to thank Professor Sarifuddin from University of Malaya, Head of Chemistry Department. Thank you, Professor, for helping me to do this video by providing me informa you know, enough information and data. See you all again in next video. Thank you very much again, guys.